Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am coming to you from Stratford-upon-Avon. I am actually in the Hotel Indigo right now in Stratford-upon-Avon. I am just about to check out of this gorgeous room. I've already filmed a hotel room review. You who are around on my channel know how that works. Um, here for a girls weekend actually, but I cheekily decided to come up the night before because the last thing you really want on a girls weekend is that annoying friend with her video camera who wants to make travel videos for YouTube. What I will do is film this as like a one day in Stratford-upon-Avon travel vlog. And then if we get up to anything else, interesting that I can film. I will do like a kind of culmination of the other kind of we're here for Friday and Saturday um, in Stratford-upon-Avon. So yeah, so if that sounds good, come join me for a fun day of sightseeing. Stratford-upon-Avon is the birthplace of Shakespeare, so everything here is all things Shakespeare. My hotel even has tons of Shakespeare branding, so we're just gonna lean into that. Um, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm the world's biggest Shakespeare fan, but I think when in the birthplace of someone who's such an icon, why not learn a bit more about his life? So I'm gonna go visit his birthplace. I wanna go to Anne Hathaway's cottage, which is like a little bit outside of the city. And yeah, and just see what else there is lovely to see and do in the town. So let's go get out of this hotel room and let's go explore. I started my morning at the Four Teas, which is a English uh, 1940s themed tea room. And I was presented with my ration book as soon as I sat down, which is otherwise known as the menu. Now I would recommend coming here for breakfast, lunch, um, a snack or an afternoon tea seating. They do things like scones, cakes, and then of course the proper afternoon tea. It very much is a no frills kind of place. They do not take bookings unless you're booking for afternoon tea. So you just have to pop in. If there's a queue, you join the queue. I went on a Friday morning and there absolutely was no queue at all, which was uh, really lucky and great because I was wondering if I would get in and it was super easy. And yeah, it's really just a no frills place in terms of the food and the atmosphere, but it's really fun. I started with a cappuccino, which came with the outline of a plain in cinnamon, followed by eggs benedict with the hollandaise on the side at my request. And as you can see here, it's not the most gourmet place, but the food is prepared extremely well. I thought all the flavors um, of the eggs benedict were kind of spot on. And it's really not that expensive, but what you do get is wonderful atmosphere. You get to experience what it's like to be in a tea room during 1940s Britain. You get to check out kind of some of the visuals from the war around like propaganda and tips and things that were being displayed around the country during that time. And, you know, as an American who really didn't know what it was like to be in England during that time, I found this piece of it really fascinating. And I just genuinely enjoyed my experience overall and would absolutely recommend it if you're visiting Stratford-upon-Avon. So Shakespeare's house is a remarkably well-restored well 16th century property. 
Um, sorry if you can hear some scuffling. I'm walking on uneven terrain while I record this voiceover. And it's um, Shakespeare's house is actually the birthplace of Shakespeare in 1564. And his Shakespeare's father, kind of John Shakespeare, was a very entrepreneurial businessman. Um, he was a town alderman, which is how Shakespeare got to go to school. And it's also, he was a glove maker and he also had some slightly illegal business dealings of like selling wool, which is how he was able to actually buy three homes and turn it into one. And even then it was not very large, but the museum entry, um, or like the, the entrance to Shakespeare's house actually starts as a museum, which is really wonderful because you see works of art, you get to really learn more about kind of the significance of Shakespeare, kind of the totality of his contribution, um, and it's really, really wonderful. the museum you're led into this wonderful garden area and you know how I love gardens if you're, if you're kind of a regular on this channel so that was lovely go over into the actual um, Shakespeare's kind of house, the family house. And that's where a really big piece of advice is that if you just try and like blow through the rooms in the house on your own, you're gonna be super disappointed. If there are any of the guides that work for the kind of the museum and the house tour, spend time with them, don't be too shy, have a chat, let them tell you kind of the story of the room or the part of the house that you're in. And this to me is actually what made the tour because if you, or like the, the visit essentially, because it's not really a guided tour. If you blow through the house too quickly, you're just gonna kind of be like, oh, it's kind of small and whatever. But what really brings it to life are the stories that you hear from the guides. And I have to say a special thank you to John who spent an exceptional amount of time with myself and a few other visitors visitors from Germany who just was such an animated storyteller. He answered all of our questions and I think he just made our, our visit like one million times better. So, um, you know, I don't want to ruin all of the scoop, but it just it's just remarkable to hear kind of that, you know, the entrepreneurialness of Shakespeare's kind of father was what really gave him the opportunity to have his education and what essentially allowed him to kind of take that to the next level um, because obviously a lot of boys got education in Stratford-upon-Avon but for Shakespeare to then become kind of you know just this you know icon that he is you know you really see how it also took huge amounts of talent so yeah <laughs> really really wonderful and I would definitely recommend it if you're visiting Stratford-upon-Avon <laughs> now I am walking to Anne Hathaway's cottage. I was really hoping I could just hop in a taxi or an Uber. Uber does work in, gosh, this lighting is horrific. I'm so sorry. Um, 
Uber does work in Stratford-upon-Avon, but it was about a 10 minute wait for an Uber. Um, and this will be better. A 10 minute wait for an Uber and then essentially it's like a 10 minute drive. So I thought by the time I did all that waiting, I could just walk there in 25 minutes. So um, one of the women I had met in a clothing store earlier had told me it's actually a nice walk. So let's see, I'm kind of in like a really random alley lane right now, which is mildly dodgy, but um, I'm sure it's fine. So let's see how it goes. <laughs> So I think I see what the woman was telling me now. It's essentially because it's a pedestrian only lane for cycling or for walking. That's why, um, you know, it's a little weird, I guess, by yourself doing it, but it just seems like this is kind of um, a pedestrian and cyclist type path that goes through town, which is quite cool. So off we go. I just accidentally realized I had diverted from the path, but I was rewarded with the most remarkable wisteria. So very happy accident and I haven't gone really maybe more than a minute out of my way. I just landed in the most posh little neighborhood in Stratford-upon-Avon, which is fantastic. So I'm now here at Anne Hathaway's cottage and it looks amazing. So Anne Hathaway was not the actress we know from The Devil Wears Prada, but Shakespeare's wife. I think she was the first Anne Hathaway. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's go check it out. Okay, so I'm just arrived at Anne Hathaway's cottage and I'm taking a stroll now through her orchards and arboretum because there were some people in front of me and I thought, you know, just a bit easier to space things out and not feel like we're on top of each other. So yeah, I'm just gonna take a little stroll. It looks like it's a little like loop, but that's so pretty with being here in April. Um, I'm here very end of April. Um, and everything is just in bloom. There's cherry blossoms all around and you can hear the birds chirping and it's just nice to be in nature and you know, you realize how lucky she was to have so many beautiful grounds on her property. the Shakespeare tree and sculpture garden which was officially opened in 1988 and the garden's sculptures result from an initiative began in 1999 by the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust um, with the cooperation and a gener generous sponsorship of the Newington Crosby Foundation in the USA. Woo! Yeah America as an American. Um, 
So the joint project involved commissioning art students from both sides of the Atlantic to create Shakespeare-inspired sculptures for this site. Um, and the first five sculptures were unveiled in 2001. Lovely. So a few interesting bits on Anne Hathaway's cottage through the generations. And I'm sorry if you can hear, it sounds like there might be some slight yard work happening in the back. Um, so the cottage actually dates back to 1463. That is when the original cottage was built and it was originally built as an open hall. Um, it was open to the roof with a central heath. And then in the 1540s, the first Hathaways move in as tenant sheep farmers. Then in 1556, Anne Hathaway is born. In 1582, Anne Hathaway and William Shakespeare get married. They move into his family home on Henley Street in Stratford-upon-Avon, which is the place we were visiting earlier in this video. And then in 1610, Anne's brother Bartholomew purchases the lease to the cottage and begins to develop it. And essentially the cottage was extended, doubling in size, so chimneys and an upper floor were built, providing comfort, bedrooms, and storage. In the 1700s, sadly, the Hathaway family fortunes decline. In 1836, descendants of the Hathaways sell the cottage, but remain as tenants, and a further extension was later added um, by building in expensive stone and brick as well as timber. This was a way for the Hathaways to then show their prosperity once again. And then in 1892, the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust buys the cottage, keeping the family on as custodians. So very interesting. Um, it's, when you think about these historic properties, you know that they've lived so many lives and I think this just really showcases quite a few with the Anne Hathaway cottage. Okay, so whoop. I really enjoyed my visit to Anne Hathaway's house. I think um, the family lived in the house for 13 generations, which is pretty remarkable. And once again, like Shakespeare's birthplace, the guides really make the experience because I think the exterior of the house and the gardens are spectacular. The interior is maybe a bit underwhelming, but... It, you're not touring like a royal palace, you're touring a real family home. And I think that's what makes it really special and remarkable because you actually, even if you're not interested in Shakespeare or kind of that piece of it, it gives you a really accurate portrayal of what life would have been like during that time frame for a family and that economic status. So I found that quite interesting in how people lived in these very small dwellings because the house essentially had been extended um, and Anne hadn't lived in the house when it was extended. So it's really just, I think to me, that was the most fascinating part and just imagining what life would have been like. And you also got some more snippets of Anne's life as well, which were around the fact that um, her mother died when she was eight. She had to raise her siblings until her father got remarried and had a stepmom, so that was quite interesting. And yeah, and then she ended up, she was actually like, I think quite a bit older than Shakespeare when they got married. He was 18, she was 26, so a little bit scandalous. And the thought is that she was with child, which was the reason why they got married. But before that, they had actually just been living together. Um, they had done something called like a hand, hand? 
hold a holding ceremony um, that allowed them to kind of live together before they were married. Um, and that was when I think she had like moved into Shakespeare's kind of family home. So super interesting. I would definitely recommend a visit and I don't think the walk is bad at all if you get a nice day because you are on these kind of footpaths. And um, even though I felt it was a bit dodgy at first because I was all by myself on the walk home, school's gotten out and there's just so many people. So I'm lucky I found a quieter stretch to do it. Who <laughs> can't see me? All right, so sorry for the horrible lighting, but next I am going to a new place, which is the house that um, Shakespeare had built to live in with Anne Hathaway. I feel like we're going full circle. Birth, wife, family life, death. <sighs> bit morbid um, but yeah so I wanted to see that because apparently at the time when Shakespeare kind of had built the house for Anne and the family to live in um, it was apparently the second most expensive house in town and so let's go see I'm very excited to go check it out Stunning Knot Garden, which was constructed between 1919 and 1920 um, in a design by Ernest Law. And um, Law was a London barrister, a trustee of the Shakespeare birthplace, and an expert in garden history. And I have to say, I think it's the prettiest garden that I've seen today so far. garden there are nine different sculptures from an American sculptor actually called Greg Wyatt and they are all in kind of I think cast bronze so let's go take a look sculptures are meant to you can touch them there's actually they're called he, he designs ooh, <laughs> he designs all of his sculpture work so that they are tactile and they're meant to be touched which is kind of interesting because often with art your or sculptures you're afraid to touch anything but I guess that's allowed <laughs> the lovely roof terrace of New Place. So the interesting thing about visiting New Place is obviously we chatted a bit before about how we're kind of coming full circle. I'm sorry if you can hear some noise in the background. There's a, a video um, exhibition in the next room. Um, but what's really cool about this is the house that I'm actually standing in right now was like the house next door to Shakespeare's house because the house was eventually demolished. So when you come to visit New Place, you essentially get to see all the gardens and land that you kind of walk through is like where the original house was 
which is quite cool. And it was incredibly massive um, after going to Shakespeare's birthplace and Anne Hathaway's house. When you actually see the architectural models um, in the exhibition here, you realize how far he had really come in life, um, both with the proximity of where the house is in town, um, as well as the sheer size of the house. So yeah, it's a really, I think it's a really nice way to spend a day here in Stratford-upon-Avon. And um, I ended up purchasing the ticket um, that allows you to go to three different properties, but if you want to go to more, there is that option. So yeah, so I would say this is a really fun way to spend the day and I really hope um, that you have enjoyed Get out of the sun. Yeah, so I really hope um, I filmed this video in a slightly different style because I know that I'm about to go hop into a house with seven other women and I'm not going to be able to do my usual kind of sit down and take you through in, in like huge detail like I usually do. So I hope that you've really enjoyed this video. If you've ever been to Stratford-upon-Avon, please leave a comment down below because sharing is caring here on this channel. I still feel like I've only scratched the surface, but I do feel like going to see all three houses you really can do in like a half day kind of trip and I think if you want to do more of the town you would need to a get an earlier start or B um, just spend an extra day here so maybe I will get to film a second vlog here with more of what we get up to because I'd love to see more of the town um, more of the other other kind of sites and do a bit of shopping so if you like this video please hit that like button and if you want to see what I get up to next in Stratford-upon-Avon please hit that that subscribe button. Thanks again for tuning in and I will see you soon.